just a note about cork wall covering. Any wall covering, but especially cork. It's lightweight. It tends to go back where it wants to. Okay, we got one, two, three, four corners here. Nothing to play around. These are all potential breaches of the wall covering in the sense that if you don't do it right, you, this will lift, this will lift, this will lift, and this won't stay. So you have to choose a corner to, to get it in place first. Once you get this corner in place right here, you can't start pushing this corner in place because it's gonna lift from here. So you need to do it with two hands, holding this one in place, and then working on that one, okay? I suggest you get two of these and you run your smoothers down on each corner very gently and it pushes the wall covering into place, pulling from here. Once you get this established, you can do this. I'm going around the radial bull nose. They're tricky. And the way to get the air out is to simply hug the radial bull nose nice and firm. Don't rip it, but nice and firm. Get that spatula smoother around that radius and push that wall covering onto that corner. Okay? You don't want to come back an hour or two later and see air pockets, okay? As you can see, it's really nicely done. Now, let me tell you what I have underneath it. I'm not playing games here. I am using liquid nails in the toothpaste size tube that gets sold at your hardware store or your local box store. Okay, don't play games with these corners. This is a uh, potential for a lot of liability with it coming up and having a terrible installation. We glued the back of the cork, then we put extreme tack in here, in here, but over here, I put liquid nails, okay? It's not going to change the color of your wall covering. It's going to hold on to that, just like nails. Okay, that's how you do that, I'll show you. You see the arch, we're going to separate, right where you see that crease in the middle of your screen, Gonna come around that arch and join the outer with the inner. Just before you trim this part, there's no going back when you think about it after you cut it. And so you wanna make sure that this corner is perfectly in place, okay? And then, let's face it, if I push this in, I might pull from here, right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to push from this side here into the corner. This way you won't be taking from there. So just push into that corner right before you cut it. You see how it's tightening up just a bit more? You can see it moving. You see I'm pushing here. And who cares if we scuff this? It's getting cut off, right? There you go. Just do it like that. Okay. You got the idea. I can feel the corners extremely nice and firm, tight, in place. And it's going to look very nice after it dries because this is nice and in place. I can't hear any air. Beautiful. A lot of work goes into learning how to hang wallpaper. You know, you may know how to hang a certain type, but there's always surprises when you start hanging different things. But if you know how to hang wallpaper, you can learn how to hang any wallpaper, even gold even gold wallpaper, okay? Like I said, I'm pushing against here. I don't want to affect my corner once it's established. First of all, it's a waste of time. 
Second of all, you'll undo what you did. Nice long extended shaft right in that corner. Not too much pressure because we know our corner is already in place. No need to kill it. And now we have a nice clean cut. You see? Let them see that corner, please. Very nice. Okay, and our bull nose is nice and ready to be left alone because it's in place. And the way you do that is to simply go up and down with your hand and listen for air. Listen for air, feel it. There's a lot you can do with your hands and ears when you're hanging paper. Okay, push that down. Make the wall covering hug that corner by using your soft hand. Okay, I feel some, I feel some air here. Uh -huh. Let's get that out. Okay, very nice. Okay, so now we've come around to this other side of the arch. This was the room we did first. The customer said, I like it so much, I want the hallway done. Now we have to join the hallway and the bedroom. These are not typical corners. They're bullnose, they're radiuses. We can do it. Just focus on here. Show them if they can see these ripples. See these ripples? Just go slowly up and down. And I talk a lot about torque. A straight sheet of wallpaper does not ripple. Right? Unless its straightness is being challenged by unevenness underneath it. These ripples that you're seeing are the results of minor imperfections with the straightness of this entire wraparound. But that's okay. That's called torque, and I just did a video on that recently. Now, before we can wrap this around, we want to feel for where the stress is being created and eliminate it. Okay? So that we can wrap it around effectively. So, this is what I treated my radiuses with. Liquid nails. Don't play games with this stuff. Now, check to see if your wall covering will be affected color-wise. Cork is very sensitive to ripping, and so we don't want it tearing as we go around. always want to protect. Now, we're not going to cut it for the, for the final right here. We're just relieving the excess so that we can plan for the final trim. Okay. Now, what's most important right now is that with clean hands,
always check you smoother. Make sure that it's scratch free. Now, simple as that. My bedroom border comes up right about here, right at the edge of this. So I'm going to be trimming this on after the bend. You see that torque? You see those ripples? That's from the unevenness. But that's normal. It's just completely normal. Don't think you failed because you got these ripples. I'm just mashing that glue into the fibers of the backing by doing this. I relieved my stress here. We're going to put a separate piece here and seam it there. Okay, I am sufficiently satisfied that my wall covering is attached as best as possible. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is put some tension on it. I'm going to put very sticky tape on this. Again, I don't care if this gets ruined. It's not part of the plan. Okay, after this bend becomes a half an hour, after the bend becomes, a, it gets used to be bent to fibers, I'll cut it. So 
so this is our first bull nose cut. The skill is in the glue. If you don't use the right glue, as you can imagine, the corner puts pressure on the wall covering to open. It's bent. It would be like bending a PVC pipe over your knee and it just springs back up. Same thing here. If you use the right glue, you'll be in good shape. And don't panic. It's not worth it. Been there and done that. Okay. What you're looking at in this part of the frame is, from the bedroom, the right-hand side of the archway. And so, this part of the job was done first, the bedroom. Then the customer said, I like it so much, I would like to continue it from the opening at the archway into the hallway just beyond the bedroom where the closets are and the master bathroom. And this is where we began to continue from the what was already done part to the area that he wanted done. And so right there, what I'm doing is trimming the new piece to my left of that knife and the old existing to the right. In order to do this, we need enough meat, so to speak, of the wall covering that comes from the archway out onto the wall against which you see me cutting right now. I suggest that we all use a laser level for this, but I realize that not everybody has a laser level. And so if you didn't have a laser level, you can see that the laser is guiding a very perfectly straight line. And that's where my blade is following. If you mess this up, you will see a crooked line. Even though the cork adapts very well to splicing, if it should not be straight, well, you will notice it. And so that's why I suggest something that's going to ensure a very straight cut. So, making sure that I cut through both layers, the top, which is what I'm pulling back right now, and the existing wallpaper, which is what you see me revealing right now. And there you have it. There you have my new splice seam which joins the bedroom from which we're taking the video into the archway. And now we're going to remove the paper behind the new spliced in wallpaper. And why do I put that there? It's to protect the wallpaper from getting glue on it. Because don't forget, I used a very heavy-duty construction adhesive to keep the wallpaper down. And so I don't want to find out that if I get it on this cork, an ugly residue is left behind. It's 
it's wallpaper removal 101. Not to mention that it's extremely annoying. Do you get annoyed when you hang wallpaper? Sometimes I do. Sometimes. Unfortunately, that's not enough, what I just did. So now we have the backing that has to be removed. That can't be removed without wetting it. One of the problems with today's high-end wallpaper is that you don't know what to believe on the instructions. If this wallpaper gets water on it, it's the end of the world. It may be, but it's not necessarily the truth. They say that so that you can't return it. So they just say, and so you get worried. And that's why you have to take all of your wall covering, especially the high-end stuff, take a piece out and test it for glue, water, the whole nine yards. Because you'll make your job a lot harder if your wall covering can tolerate water with a clean rag save a lot of time and a lot of aggravation. Don't believe everything you read on the instructions. And the people who sell it, they don't know anything about hanging it, except what hangers have told them about it. That's it. And that's not a knock, it's just the truth. You know, it's robotics. Follow the instructions. Okay. That should be good. I want to see my seam so that I can push it back. This one. You might overlap. They get tricky. Your seams can be tricky. You think you're right, you seam meanwhile you overlap. And I have good eyes for this. Roller? This?
This is the joy of hanging wallpaper. Let me tell you why. This is not easy to do. It's challenging. And that's what makes it a pleasure. A real pleasure. I mean, you don't want something impossible to do. But a challenge? Of course. That's what you want. Challenge. Look at how beautiful it is. I mean, it's pretty nice. My mother taught me how to hang wallpaper. And I would say, looking back, she pretty much gave me the confidence to hang it. Because she wasn't an expert wallpaper hanger. But she hung it. As, as a wallpaper hanger, you become crafty. You, look, you know where the term copy and paste came from? The world of craft. And that's what we do when we hang paper. You don't pull the sheet down because your wallpaper is missing a little piece. No, no, no. You put that much work into it. You simply mend. And that's a professional's way of handling any imperfections. You copy, and now you paste. Come close. Let them see that. Spencer doesn't hide problems. What's nice about cork is that just like you pull off a wine cork, you push that stuff back in, it mends itself. I really should have a new blade. And let me tell you a little secret about cork. Your, the piece with which you mend can be bigger than what you need. There's a little trick, you know why? Because, I don't even know where the repair is, but it literally goes in and expands. So folks, honestly, I don't know where the repair is. Hopefully you on the video can check it out. Just show them this area. I think it's right there. And then to make it permanent, you want to roll it just like that. See, that solidifies it. With glue, it's a new, it's a new piece. And then it's not going to come out.
What I'm doing here is very important, but as I watch the video over, as I edit this video, it's not apparent to the person who may be looking at this video trying to figure out how to wallpaper an arch for the first time while installing cork. When I flapped the reveal, what you're looking at in the middle of the screen is called a reveal. 
and you know that the wool covering in the reveal is a separate piece from the reveal that starts from the floor up to where the arch begins its radius. And so the reveal has three parts, the one I'm working on and the two six feet pieces you see just in the middle of the screen at the bottom, one of them. When you flap this around, this cork, you'll see that I had to make slices, vertical slices in the cork in order to get it to relieve the stress. When I wrap it around this radial edge, those slices become spaces. And so if you look on the wall covering under my hands, you'll see white spaces. In order to get rid of those white spaces, you need to simply cut and paste. In all of those white spaces, you just need to fill in where it's white with pieces that are cut out specifically made for the opening or the void that I caused by doing it. That's the only way to do this reveal with cork wallpaper. So as I showed you earlier, simply cut and paste using your artistic skills to fill in the voids with spaces of the wallpaper from the scrap left over. So you have cork, it's very expensive and you don't want to waste it. But you don't have enough from the ceiling to the floor. Take a look at this. Why don't we try to splice it? So rather than have the customer order what costs at least $200 per roll, I decided let me splice the wool covering since the pieces of the cork wallpaper are squares. If you look at that wallpaper on your screen, you'll see squares. And so the cork is manufactured by taking patches of squares and they glue it to the backing that gets glued to the wall. And so if I can simulate the vertical seams that are naturally manufactured with a wall covering, then I've done my job well. And so I simply put one piece and spliced it against another, making sure that I was consistent with the manufacture seams that come with cork wallpaper. You'll see in a moment that this came out extremely well. Usually when you splice wall covering, you don't cut straight through it. You make your cut going along the pattern, a bold line in the pattern of the wall covering. This way you hide the cut, but here your cut is open to the eye to be seen by all. And so it has to be consistent with the pattern in the cork. And that is a straight horizontal cut, which you'll see I'm going to make after this trim cut is at the top and it has yellow tape behind it. Why yellow tape? Because remember, yellow tape is the least offensive and causes the least damage to this type of wall covering. You don't want anything too tacky. And so let's go up to the top of the wallpaper and do our splice cut. If you ever get glue on the surface and you have to paint it, and you can't get the glue off, sand it and use an alcohol-based primer or oil so that you can cover it. Otherwise, you'll reactivate the glue and your paint will not adhere 
and you'll have all sorts of trouble. Okay, so that's done. What about this? anything. You should get the surface to be as close to the, the point of where it's going to really be for the rest of the installation. In other words, get all the glue out from behind it. Not all of the glue. All of the excess glue. Get all of the air out. Can you imagine trying to put a splice together after you cut it while there was air and excessive glue there, it's not going to meet up, right? Okay, let's try this. So now normally I would tell you to do a zigzag cut. Not with cork. Like I said, cork is very forgiving. But by doing that, you see these chunks of gold? You could void them easily by we're just going to cut it straight. I've tried it that way and it's not good. Now notice that I'm using the point of the knife, not the shaft. In other words, I'm trying to use the thinnest part of this blade possible. Because You want the cut to be as thin as possible. Let's see how we did. Sometimes it's a home run, sometimes it's not. A lot of times the rule in wallpaper is, how does it look? If it looks good, it's good. So far, so good. Aha, uh -huh. very nice. Oh, well, I think I like it. I think I like it. So that is how you splice cork. And that's a keeper, we're going to leave it. If it didn't look good, I wouldn't leave it. We're going to do a double cut over here. Don't worry about that little rip in the action. That's what happens when your blade gets dull. Show them the piece. Show it to them. Good idea. 
You can come up close. Show the little piece down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll show them the same too. 